tip when using a roller. So right now I'm rolling a second coat of Fusions Ash. And what I wanna show you guys is all the weight is on the right side of the roller where this bar is. So whenever you're rolling something, always roll in the direction of going towards the weighted end. Because this side, this side right here, that's meant to fan out any of the weight lines that your roller makes. So when people are rolling, instead of going in all different crazy directions, I always say act like you're reading a book and go from like, you know, this direction and keep moving this way. Always move in the direction of the weight of the arm on the roller. This way, your left side up here has an opportunity to fan out any lines. Hey guys, it's Danelle from Painted. So what I'm doing today, I thought I would pop on here real quick and show you guys what I'm up to. I'm supposed to be painting my kitchen cabinets. However, I will admit I am the queen of squirrel brain and I swear I get distracted easily. So I painted my island with the fusion ash. That's like the really dark, rich charcoal gray color. And because I had a wet roller, I also had a wet paintbrush. I decided I was going to do an outdoor pot. Well then, I was painting in my garage and I kept going back and forth so much and this back door had so much dog damage on it. Like you could tell, we have a big German Shepherd and she actually can open doors. So we replaced the knob to like a round one so that she couldn't use you know, her paw with a lever and just hit it. But in the process of her always opening that back door, she scratched off all the original paint on that door and it looked terrible. And I will post a picture of what it looked like originally so I figured, hey, I have a dirty brush, a dirty roller. I love ash. You guys tease me that I paint everything with ash. So I thought, why not paint the back door? So if my husband hops on here and he sees this, he'll realize, hey, new project going on. Um, but I wanna talk about the steps. One thing you should always do, and I didn't do it just because I'm here home alone right now and I, to be honest, I've never taken a doorknob off. I'm sure it's not too hard. It looks like it's just a couple of screws, but taking the knob off would make your life a lot better. And if you can take the door off itself and lay it down flat, that might help you too. I personally like painting a door when it's hung. This way I can actually do both sides easily. So, so if you guys were doing it, I would say definitely though, take off the handle because right now I'm really good at edging and I can edge beautifully around it without getting paint all over it but if you want your texture to be the exact same, you know, you're gonna see the difference between a brush stroke and a roller. So in order to have that perfectly, you know, even finish, having like the lock mechanism in the doorknob off would obviously be the best. So the first thing that I did was I washed the entire door with our Fusion TSP substitute. This door was dirty and grimy and um, doors have a lot of oils on them, especially like where the hinges are. You know, if you ever had like a squeaky door and you sprayed like WD-40 or something on it, you definitely wanna make sure that you clean really well by the hinges. Um, also like by the doorknob, our door not only was dirty, and like I said, I'll show you guys a picture, but it also had scratched up paint. So I had to sand around where the lock mechanism is and also where the doorknob is just to get the finish nice and smooth. But the reason that I'm popping on here is not to you know, explain to you guys that I painted my back door. What I wanted to show you, because I think this is a great learning moment, is when you're working with really dark colors, such as like the ash or like coal black, sometimes people have a little bit of streaking. And usually what it is, is they have added water to their paint. Like maybe they were working with a wet brush or they had washed out their roller head and it still had some water residue left in it, and that will make the pigments kind of separate. Another thing that I notice, and this is really, really prominent with like the metallics, is the pigments in the paint, the best way to get a really even finish is to make sure your paint is all laying in the same direction. And I'm gonna show you guys a close up so you can see what I'm talking about. Because on this door, I have a section, oh, don't mind my dogs, they're gonna go nutty. Um, on this door, I have a section that you can see where it's like a high sheen, like it looks shiny, and then it looks more matte. So the pigments are not sitting the same way. And let me show you guys real quick what I'm talking about. So right here, 
give me a thumbs up if you guys can see what I'm talking about. See how it almost looks like it's two different colors here? If I back up, maybe you guys can see it a little bit better. That is the only area on this entire door that looks uneven. Now, this is just the first coat, so I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna fix that on my second coat, but the way to fix it is to make sure that when I'm rolling, I have my final layer all going down in the same direction. So I'm just gonna paint the second coat of paint on this door, and um, I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about. So, hold on. I apologize for my hand in the way. Okay, so whenever I'm doing a steel door, obviously clean it really well with some TSP first. I like to use both a brush and a roller. So the brush I'm using is the one I use all the time. It's the pointed um, Stallmeister. Um, it's looking a little crazy right now because I also just used it on that pot that I'm painting outside. And then also Fusion's roller. So what I like to do is I first edge out all of these boxes you know, like the indents on my door with the brush. And then I like to give it a smooth once over with the roller. Now this color has amazing coverage. So this is just one coat of paint. I always tell people do two thin coats versus one thick coat. So what I'm gonna show you guys real quick, and I might not even do the whole door. I just wanted to show you how to fix when you have that uneven sheen area. So I'm gonna just, how about, I hope you guys can see this. Just, I'm gonna do this part with you guys. So the first thing I would do is paint out the indented area and you guys will notice I go when I'm painting I kind of paint fast um, I'm not worried about getting brush strokes I find that when you overwork the paint that's when you get them and then I'm also going to paint real quick around here because I want this part to be even and I will slow it down a little bit when I'm edging. But the great part about the door being hung is I can open it and now I have some more working room. Right now, um, the temperature, we're in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and today's a nice cool day. It's not all humid like it's been. So this is a perfect day to paint. My garage is not super hot or anything. I think it's like in the 50s or something like that outside right now. So it's nice and cool. Like if this doorknob was off, this would obviously go super quick. Okay. So when I load up my roller, I want to make sure that I don't have a ton of paint on it. Otherwise, I'm going to get like a stipple texture that I don't like. Um, so as long as my roller is moving up and down and it's not gliding on the door, then I have an adequate amount of paint. And I, you can tell, you know, when your paint is wet, it looks a little bit... Um, darker than when it's dry so I can see where I've went and where I have not went but I want to show you guys how to fix that area that was really high that looked uneven where it was like kind of shiny and then not as shiny so I'm gonna do this door like I'm actually gonna do this top panel right here all the way down and I know you guys probably can't see some of this down here If you watched my roller video I did yesterday, I talked about rolling in a direction so that the, the weight of your arm is always moving in the same direction so that this side can fan. But in order to fix that sheen issue, now that I have full coverage on this panel, I'm gonna make my roller go all in the same direction. So instead of going up and down like this, I'm gonna let it go all in one solid coat going down. And I'm going to overlap just a tiny bit. And what I'll do is I'll take a picture for you guys 
when I'm completely done and you'll see that this area now on this panel is not going to be all kind of shiny, kind of not shiny. So that's a great way to fix if you have that issue. And that's just what I wanted to pop in and show you guys. And then um, real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I like to do the indents first. I think I painted. I can't remember. See, when I start talking, I can't remember what I've done. I did. I can feel that it's, it's wet. So I painted the indent. And now I'm going to follow up with the roll. And I get the coverage on that I like first. And then I'm going to lay it all in that same direction. And because my brush is going to give a different texture than my roller, I like to take my roller and go over my paint a little bit just so I have that exact same texture. And if you guys ever get too much texture on something, allow it to dry. It'll take about two hours to dry in like normal room, you know, room temperature. After that two hours, you can take like a really light sanding, like sanding sponge and sand off any texture you got that you don't like. Um, one of my customers recently was painting in her garage. I think it was in her, yeah, it was in her garage. And she left a window open. And overnight, some debris came in, some bugs came in, and it landed on her finish. If that happens to you guys, don't try to like start picking off anything that's in your paint while it's wet. Let it dry completely. Then go ahead and sand that stuff off. I know it sounds gross to like let bugs in your, in your finish. They will sand off. Sand it off completely and then go ahead with like a final layer of paint and you're never going to see it. So now I'm going to go all in that same direction again. And it'll make my finish nice and even. And I like to do doors and sections like this and then just make sure that on my final roll, on my final roll of the roller, I'm going in that one direction. So that is it. Let me show you guys real quick again a close up. So that final roll was going all in the same direction from the top all the way to the bottom. And you guys can see, like, check this out. We need to paint and everything too. But this just shows like the damage we have from our dog. So I'm going to see how Fusion is incredibly durable and it can really hold up to a lot because our island's been painting in it, painted in it. And um, I usually on a door, I would not top coat this. And now that we have the different knob and the dog knows not as much to jump up on it, I'm hoping that I don't have to add any other layers. So probably when I have the second coat of ash, this door will be done. So I will put in the comments what it looked like originally, but I hope that tip, especially you know with using the roller, will help out someone. So have a great rest of your day, guys.